Hey, what's up guys? My name is Steven Mayu, and you're watching my video series on Practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. In this video, we're going to learn how to accomplish this challenge, return the largest numbers in arrays. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, I've already have my uh, JavaScript file uh, created. I'm calling it six underscore uh, largest underscore number dot js and I've already gone ahead and embedded that in my HTML file and uh, I have my HTML file opened here with my JavaScript console uh, opened up in Chrome. Uh, so I'm going to show you two solutions to this uh, problem, to this um, to this challenge. Uh, the first solution is going to be uh, fairly obvious um, but before I show you, uh, I should probably go over the challenge with you uh, just very quickly. So in this challenge, return an array. So we need to return an array consisting of the largest number from each provided subarray. So here we go. Uh, we have this array of an array, uh, an array of arrays, and we need to find the largest number in each one. So 5 and then 27 and 39 and 1001 and we need to return that in like a new array um, so uh, basically we're just iterating through an array and each subarray and I'm going to show you two solutions uh, to doing that so uh, let's go ahead go to our uh, text editor and I believe this is called function largest of four okay and it has one argument here I'm going to go ahead and and just copy and paste this for our test console.log so we can see it in our uh, JavaScript console in Chrome. Oops. Okay, there we go. So, um, yeah, I'm just double checking. All right, everything looks good there. Mm, yeah, all right. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do, um, I, I need to store. Um, the largest number from each subarray um, in an array. So I'm going to go ahead and, and call that largest numbers and uh, just um, set it equal to an empty array. Um, and I'm going to create two loops, and this is going to be kind of an obvious um, first solution. Um, I'm going to create an inner loop and an outer loop. Um, the outer loop will go and iterate through each of the subarrays, and then each inner loop, okay, when it's on a current uh, subarray, it will go ahead and check each of the numbers. So uh, I'm just going to use that, uh, use a for loop in order to do this. So for uh, var x zero, that's our outer loop counter. All right, x is less than the length of the array, so we'll keep iterating and so long as x is less than the length of the array. And all right, x plus plus to increment it. Okay, and uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, just uh, create a new loop. Call call it y. Okay, and that is going to be less than array x dot length. Okay, so uh, basically um, the the array x in the first iteration uh, array uh, would be zero, so that would be this like first subarray. So the length of each of the subarrays. That's basically what's happening there. Okay, and then we'll just increment it like so. Okay, so we've got this. Um, okay, so now we're going to iterate, iterate through each uh, subarray and then go through each of the numbers here. Um, I also need a variable to store like the current largest number. So I'm going to say uh, var current largest. Okay, and I'll just um, set it like that. So uh, I'm going to say um, a condition. I'm going to create a condition here. So if if array with a with a subarray of x and the uh, integer y, if that is greater than 
current largest. Okay, then we're going to say current largest is now array xy. Okay, and if by the end of this first um, kind of uh, inner loop, okay, the end of this inner loop, if we have found the um, largest number, okay, we're going to say largest numbers dot push, that means add it to this array up here, and we're going to say current largest. Okay, now uh, we got to find the largest number from each of the subarrays. So um, it's a good idea to go ahead and reset the current largest variable um, um, before each <coughs> inner loop right here. Uh, so I'm going to say current largest equals zero. Um, all right, so by the time this all finishes, I have the, both uh, the inner and outer loops. We're just going to return largest numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Make sure I save this one too. I'm going to go to my example.html file and I should have a, an array. Yes, I do. 5, 27, 39, 1001. Let's just do a quick check. Yeah, 5, 27, 39, 1001. Okay, and sure enough, that works. So uh, again, I've created two arrays, an outer array to iterate and go to each subarray, okay? And then an inner uh, uh, loop to examine each of the numbers of the subarray. And basically, this variable current largest excuse me, it is um, going to be a placeholder. And uh, if the current number in the inner loop, if it's larger than the um, current largest, we're just going to replace it right here. And uh, by the end of this inner loop, once we have checked all of the numbers, we're going to push the current largest to the largest number array, and then be sure to reset it back to zero, uh, so it can um, it can be fresh uh, for the for the next subarray. Okay, so um, that is uh, one way to do it. Uh, I'm going to show you another way um, using functional programming. We're going to use a completely new uh, array method that you haven't seen in this video series before. Um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, so I still need a variable. Our largest, um, I'll call largest numbers. All right, I still need to have an empty array like this. Um, now I'm going to use our good friend for each. Okay, and remember for each takes an anonymous function, um, and I'm just going to call you know each one subarray just so that it's more you know human readable. Um, okay, so with this for each, we're going to iterate and each item is going to be a subarray. And you know, again, we can call this anything. We can call it item, we can call it value, value whatever we want. I'll call it subarray uh, just to um, just to be you know very clear. Um, and uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to say largest numbers. Okay. Um, push. Okay, and then I'm going to say sub array. Okay, and I'm going to use the sort function. Okay, to go ahead okay. and return b minus a. Okay, so um, now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, and I want to show you something here. What happens when we run this? Uh, oh, we get undefined. That's interesting. Oh, we haven't returned anything. So return largest numbers. Okay. Go ahead and... Okay. So I'm actually getting uh, an array of arrays, but if you go ahead and look at it, each subarray is sorted from descending order, or, or uh, yeah, this is descending order. So you see here, five, four, three, one, and here's 27, 26, 18, 13, 
okay, 39, 37, and so on. These are all sorted. So really, uh, I just need the first um, number, which would be the highest number. So I'm just going to go ahead, excuse me, check my time here. Oh, I've still got five minutes. I'm just going to make sure I add in the zero index. Oops, that's some editors telling me it's in the wrong place. There we go. Okay, and there you have it. I get the same result. It, uh, it looks a little confusing right here, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, walk you through that uh, one more time. So we're still storing the uh, largest numbers in an empty array, and we're going to iterate through the array that we give the argument using the for each method. Okay, and uh, we're going to push, well, back up. We're going to use the sort method on each of the subarrays and basically it also takes an anonymous function and with this return b minus a we're returning it in a descending order if i did return a minus b okay okay we'll actually get the uh, smallest numbers uh, in each of the arrays okay we're going to do it B minus A. Uh, I want to show you exactly how the sort method works, and then uh, and then we'll call it a day um, with this video. So if we did return array sort, and we did like some you know different words like apple, cat, um, beer. I'm drinking a beer right now. The zebra. We'll do one more. Korea. Okay. Oops. Oops. I did not save this. Yeah. Oops. Uh, <laughs> I must be tired or something right here. It's still giving me, all right, this is what I want, okay. Okay, you can see here, well, um, you know, besides the capital letters, oops, um, it, it basically, it does a pretty good job of alphabetizing uh, strings. With numbers, it's a little different. Let me show you what happens when we use numbers. I'm gonna say like a two, four, and 10, one, 21, do one more, 34, 14. I'm going to show you what happens here. So I'm going to save that. And look at that. I get 1, 10, 14, 2, 20, 34, 4. That's not exactly sorted. So we got to have this anonymous function in here to. You know, actually sort the integers. It doesn't sort integers like it does strings. So if we go back, now we actually get it in ascending order. And if we do it this the other way, then we get it in uh, descending order. So with all of that, okay, oops. This is, uh, one second here, guys. Do I have enough time? I do. Okay, so basically that's what we're doing here. So we're getting each subarray, we're sorting it, and we're doing B minus A, which is going to give us the largest numbers first. And it's all packed in here in this push method, and uh, we're just going to return the first uh, number from that sort of array, which would be the largest number. Okay, so uh, there you have it. You have uh, two solutions for finding the largest numbers in each of the subarrays. Uh, one is very obvious, um, using two loops to iterate through each of the numbers. Uh, this one here, um, I think it's a, it's a bit cooler, maybe more elegant, um, but, uh, but now you've got the sort method under uh, your tool belt. Okay, that's all for now. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Oh, I didn't press pause yet, but be sure to leave some comments below. Okay, bye for real. Bye.